Ah, greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Project Free Me Life podcast. I am Silaman. I'm here with you. Today is Thursday, December 18th, 2000, 2014. It's podcast number 20, and we are here with David Diamondheart, who is a sacred geometry artist and healer. Um, before we get to him, we're just going to start off with our uh, our beginning meditation to just sort of open up space for proper communication and overall enjoyment of the show. Uh, so if you would all just go ahead, lean back in your chairs, uh, close your eyes if your eyes are open, just sort of sit back, notice your thoughts floating down, don't get attached to any of these thoughts, just using this time for you to be in silence, to allow your true flow, your true self, your true heart feelings to come out in this moment. Feeling that, feeling how good it feels, allowing it to wash over you and heal you, removing any stress, removing any tension in your body, allowing your energy to completely heal and to feel whole once again. Being in your space, feeling how good it feels. Now sort of wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, come on back to the podcast. I want to welcome all of you, and especially welcome to our guest for today. So David Demonhart, welcome. Thanks for being on the podcast today, David. Um, we're excited to have you. Oh, well, thanks for having me on the show. Um, so we're here today just pretty much to interview you a little bit about your art. Um, how we open off is we usually ask uh, our guests who they are and what they do and where they come from so that anyone watching has a little bit of an idea about them. So would you care to tell us a little bit about who you are? Who am I? That's a pretty deep subject there, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's a good way to get to know somebody. You just literally ask them who they think they are. I don't know. See, it's like all the things that I would use to describe myself really seem like artifacts in my life. Don't really seem like who I am. I don't, I don't know that they these events define me, but I can, you know, like vital statistics like where I was born and how old I am and stuff like that, I can go over that. I'm 47. I was born in 1967. Um, I used to lead pretty much a normal life until I was two. And at age two, my dad moved our entire family to Israel. So we lived in Israel for about two and a half years. Hebrew was my first language, although I don't know it now. And uh, so we came back to the States when I was five. And um, I don't know, I... My parents got divorced when I was six, and then I kind of bounced around between my parents. I lived a couple years with mom, a couple years with dad, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Would you say that helped inspire your your artistic um, abilities or your spiritual sense at all? I, I'm not sure that it made me do that as much as it kind of gave me a sense of self-reliance like I like since everything was subject to change in my life I kind of got to where I had to depend on myself more you know maybe be a little more introverted you know it's like you know if every two years you were switching off between living with one parent and the other it'd be hard to really have those deep emotional ties because that would hurt like hell when you know, you gotta see these people leave your life. You know, so it's sometimes easier not to form those emotional attachments than I don't know. I don't 
there. Yeah, I think that's happening to a lot of um, a lot of star seeds and and the different star children and artistic people in this current just all the generations actually is like they're being ripped apart from the quote unquote normal standards of what life should be. So it's hard for them to attach to such things. Um, and a lot of us are just going to like art and music to uh, pretty much just create a better world for ourselves. I believe you told me that you were um, Merkaba light activated. Is this true? Yeah, um, okay, so the first shape, sacred geometric shape that really got my attention in any sort of way was the Tesseract or the four-dimensional hypercube. And in October of 2008, I came across the Tesseract online and, and looked it up on Wikipedia. And then there was this one projection of the Tesseract that had two weight-pointed stars in it called an orthographic projection that I like fell in love with and decided I had to turn it into a wearable shape. It's like, you know, I didn't know how. I just knew I had to turn it into a wearable shape. Then I came across a gentleman's website that was a mathematician and dabbled in lost wax casting and he had actually made a Tesseract pendant for his wife. I asked him if he would send me detailed pictures of the front and back of it, which he did. And then I was able to get one on computer made by a place in Michigan in 2009. And so in February 2009, I received this piece from this jeweler in Michigan. And when I opened the box, like instantly there was energy coming off of this shape. And that was completely unexpected. I mean, it was like the first shape I would ever had made. And it was like all of a sudden there was this energy pulsing off of it. And so I didn't quite know what to make of that. Energy a little more like how you felt it or just how you felt such a resonation with that. Like you said you had it created and sent to you like in a 3D form. So when you picked it up, did you feel that or just like... Just as soon as I opened the box and put it in my hand, I felt this energy, like a jolt of energy flowing from it. It was just like, wow. It was powerful. Mm -hmm. um, so eight and a half months after I started wearing the 4D Hypercube almost around the clock, I was Merkaba light body activated by an angel while I was in the shower. It was, you know. I feel like showers are really, really interesting way for the divine to connect with us because you're literally in your purest form. You're just there in water, and it, they just have a chance to speak to you because you're not able to do anything else or really think about anything else. It's only cleansed too. So it's like the perfect time for an angel to come touch you like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're buck naked, soapy, wet, whatever. I mean... <laughs> Could you describe the experience that you had with the angel in, more in detail for us? Okay, so she said exactly six words, and then she touched me on my spine in the middle of my back. She said, prepare for Merkaba light body activation. It wasn't light body. She didn't say light body. She said light body. Two words. So it was six words total. Prepare for Merkaba light body activation. So I'm standing there in the shower, and I'm not normally having conversations with angels. This isn't like common occurrence for me or anything. I'm like kind of looking, turning around like, who the hell is in the shower with me? And then yeah. all of a sudden this angel touched me on my spine right between my shoulder blades, like right over my heart chakra on my spine. And when she did that, it like did something incredible to me. I can't even describe it. It was just like, you know, imagine Neo like all of a sudden waking up with these hoses popping off of him and he's in a bathtub full of pink snot. It was kind of like that. It was kind of like, holy shit. You know, it was like she kind of like, partially unplugged me. I don't know how else to put it. It was like almost... Say what? 
you just really open that third eye and light experience for you. Well, um, it was really more of like a, a heart centered awakening. I mean, it was like she did something with my heart chakra on the back when she touched me. And then like like instantaneously I had like these insights about my life that were like really profound like that you know my pursuits in life were all very selfish and self-centered and in not really serving my highest good you know that like materialism as a be-all end-all end of itself wasn't really the reason I was put here on earth you know to earn as much money as I could and spend as much money as I could and live the American dream that's not why I was put here it's not why I came down that's not why I stood in line and took my ticket on the wheel of life again you know <laughs> And it's good that you are awakened to that because there's a lot of people that are just now like going through the awakening process and you're able to fluently explain your story and that's that's just beneficial to the whole consciousness when people are able to tell, hey, I know when I was activated, I know what helped me change my world. You need to wake up to these signs too and don't be afraid of them. Don't pretend that they're not happening to you. So it's really exciting to hear your story be shared. Well, the, the light body activation was probably the most profound single event that happened in my life. I mean, it, I, don't, I don't know, it was really unique. <laughs> and, you know, it's kind of weird because, like, I've been around in the metaphysical community and gone, you know, to all sorts of gatherings and stuff, and, you know, people will be like, so what's your story? And, and I'll tell them and, you know, I'll, I'll like ask, like, have you ever been or have a light body activated by an angel? And they, you know, like no one says yes. You know, it's like, so it feels like really, really unique. It's like, it's like kind of like, okay, imagine that you were a unicorn in a fine field of horses and you're looking for, you know, another unicorn and it's like, holy shit, am I the only person that this has happened to, or what? You know, it's it's mm -hmm. kind of like a crazy feeling. Hmm. I would like, say I've had such a similar experience with the Kundalini awakening. Um, and I enjoy the fact that you describe it, and you describe in detail that it was specifically an angel. Um, my experience, I, I didn't have any sort of feeling like it was anything. Maybe just like a like a star. But um, do you do you know what the name of the angel was, or do you remember? I, I don't. But um, a friend of mine that is like really gifted psychically says that she's wears a white robe and has long blonde wavy hair. You know, that's that's about all I know about her. But she's talked to me twice. Like um, when when she and Merkaba Light Body activated me, that was in 2009. About six months ago, she same exact voice, light, crisp, clear, angelic female voice. She woke me up at exactly nine in the morning. And I could hear her voice in my head, and she's like, David, are you still asleep? It's time to wake up. Now, I don't believe that she was talking about me being a lazy butt and staying in bed. I think it was more like like full spiritual awakening. I think that that's more what she was going for when she said, it's time to wake up. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with um, Archangel Ariel? I'm not. I think that you would benefit from looking into that a little bit. It, when you describe her as with long, like, blonde, flowy hair, it, it represents uh, Ariel and confidence and um, the strength to wake up and be awakened. And she just seems like someone that's just calling out to your energy. Yeah, Archangel Ariel. Sounds like a... 
<laughs> um, and for anyone else that's interested, Archangel Ariel is just a really good Archangel for going through such processes. And um, there's many other ones like Raphael and Michael as well that it could have been, but your your description just sounds to connect with that so well. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so you create the jewelry out of these symbols that you've been um, meditating on or you've just been receiving? You say that they're like commissioned well, by them? Some of them I've like had dreams about them and some of them were like just a conscious decision to redo a set of shapes in my own way. Like I saw how other people had made platonic solids, but I didn't like the way anyone else made the platonic solids because in my mind's eye, they sh the wires should have a shape. They shouldn't be just completely round. And, you know, then I made, you know, other shapes like the crystal and light body shapes and, you know, the... The sacred geometry, I really think, has helped to awaken me. You know, I, I don't claim to be fully awakened. You know, I, I don't think it's a discrete process where one day you just, like, wake up and you're awakened and you never, like, go back into the illusion. It's kind of like a process of waking up, falling a little bit back to sleep, waking up, falling a little bit back to sleep. And then, you know, eventually you hope to spend more time in an awakened state than in the asleep state. The yeah. sacred geometry, to me, is something that I can use to help keep me in, in the awakened state because it, it helps with your vibration. Yeah. And uh, I see so many pieces here on the website. I'm sharing it so everybody else can see, too. And okay. they look... So beautiful. You're on my Shapeway store. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, feel free to ask me any questions about any of those shapes. Yeah. I, I'm looking at something. I was just going to ask him if he had a favorite one that right. he wanted to speak about. Well, you know, probably my favorite of all of them would have to... would have to be the 4D hypercube. That's the shape that woke me up. I mean, you know, I really do believe that that got me vibrating at a really high rate that had I not had the test rack, I don't know if I would have had my vibration high enough to withstand the Merkaba light body activation which was a really intense process. Like if your vibration hadn't gotten close to that level, I don't think you could withstand it. It would it would probably be like, you know, a thousand watts in a ten watt bulb, it'd blow you out. So I, I do think that the Tesseract helped amp me up and prepare me for the Merkaba light body activation. Yeah, do you care if I play the uh, video How to Draw Tesseract real quick on your website? Sure, go for it. There's no audio. Just Okay, so this is a little video of How to Draw Tesseract. In nine seconds. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very beautiful and very powerful shape. Yeah. So, um, so the yeah. Tesseract actually has some really strong sacred geometric ties to it. Um, for one, the Tesseract itself has 32 edges, and the Kabbalah Tree of Life has 10 Sephirot or Sephira on it, and 22 pathways in between for a total of 32 pathways to wisdom. So the 4D hypercube has 32 edges, and this is not like accidental or coincidental, they're related. You know, the, the cube is sacred to the Kabbalah. The hypercube is like an ancient lost Kabbalah symbol. It's intimately related to it. Hmm. 
Oh. So, so, so this shape is, is really powerful, and if you look at it, you can see the cubes. And there's an eight-pointed star in the center and then an eight-pointed star in the center of that. This is a little off-kilter. You're not seeing it directly overhead. It's perfectly symmetrical. It's kind of like they pop things out to, to show you the 3D, and so it's a little out of perspective. That's, that's such a beautiful image. Um, but but um, so the Tesseract, you know, obviously then the next question is what is it good for? One, it's going to help support your overall energy level. So it's a three-dimensional representation of a four-dimensional object. What that's going to do is help connect you with the energies of the multiverse. In other words, there's an infinite number of every one of us in parallel universes out there, right? Right. So this four-dimensional object done in three dimensions helps connect you in with in, in a positive and life-affirming way with the other infinite versions of yourself in the multiverse. Mm -hmm. And it's also excellent for empaths. Like, uh, I got a, if you scroll down, you can see testimonial from my friend Tanya. Um, so Tanya, for 15 years, had, like, been so seriously empathic. It's right there at the bottom that she would have a hard time being in any sort of crowds or around, you know, many people at all. It would just overwhelm her. She would feel other people's emotional states. It's the last paragraph. I'm not sure what you're surfing there. Right there above the video. So, anyways, Tani used to take on other people's emotional states and get sick and blah 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 so anyways after using the test rack she found it to be really helpful like she carries it with her and she can go out in a, into a crowd or, or go into a, a grocery store or something like that well, almost like a crystal by having these shapes on your person your frequency is just pretty much raised to a better state because they can be used for almost like a protection or a... Well, the, the Tesseract, I do believe, is very protective. If you look at the Seals of Solomon... Um, yeah, no, I just... let, me, let me see here. If you look at the Seals of Solomon, Seal 14 looks very much like the... like the... Here. Okay, um, look at figure 31 here. Give me just a second here. Okay, so this is... Uh, presentation of the Seals of Solomon, and you'll see that the Tesseract closely resembles the Seal 14, which is a protective seal. It's on page 69. 69 of your website? No, of, of the link I just sent you guys on Google Hangouts. Okay. <laughs> We're on your website surfing around. Oh. Testing. So on page 69, which is actually page 11, <laughs> figure 31. Can you guys see the resemblance between the the hypercube and in that low eight pointed star there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I do believe it has some protective I like the scope or something. Yeah. <laughs> so these are all seals of Solomon that you just said? No, no, no. I'm saying that the four D hypercube resembles this seal, this figure thirty one, which is 
a protective talisman. I see. Yeah, I feel like the points kind of help represent some sort of protection. A lot of protection symbols seem to have the different stars and just points on them. And it kind of looks like a shield. But, you know, I've, I had a friend that's really super psychic and, you know, he was asking me if he could do some experiments with, like, I have a large test rack that I call Tessa, which is 30 inches wide that's stainless steel. He said, can I bounce energies off of her? And I'm like, sure, go ahead. And he told me that when he bounced energy off of her that it returned the energy not like double or triple, but like a hundredfold, like orders of magnitude. And he said that anyone that would send energy towards the Tesseract that would be like negative dark energy would get that return like a hundredfold. And I'm like, holy crap. But I do think it's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's maybe you know, I, I did not program that into the shape. You know, it's kind of like some inherent characteristic in there of amplifying energies and sending them back to the user. It's not like a device to punish people, per se. You know, uh, it's, it's a very ambivalent tool. It's like good or bad, you send it good, it's going to send you back good. You send it bad, it's going to send you back bad. Have you seen the uh, Avengers movie and how they used uh, the name Tesseract in their free energy device? Yeah, did you see the Avengers movie and they had the Tesseract in that? Yeah, they did, and they, it was amazing. They used it to open up a wormhole in time and space. Yeah, well, see, uh, I honestly believe that the Tesseract has a, a lot to do with the awakening that we're going through. Can you guys play video? Possibly. Alright, see if you guys can play that. Um, do you want me to have sound to it? The sound will be a little choppy, but we can still play it. Our mirror image through the hypercube, revealed through inner perception, we may fall backwards within ourselves before this universe's own inception. The light may fade and wither weary atop a cosmic funeral dreary. Agent human path to look beyond the Tesseract. Transformers, more than meets the eye. Indeed. The AllSpark, a life-creating messiah cube, makes a crash landing into Antarctica. The savior like Optimus Prime, whose name implies the mathematics of cube geometry, needs to get to the life-giving cube of power before Megatron, or as I will explain, Metatron. His plan is to martyr himself by putting the cube inside of his chest and then self-destructing it if he's unsuccessful at defeating Megatron. He is Optimus Cosmic Christ Prime trying to save humanity from evil, a motif that is saturated in media aimed at children, to further the myth of Christianity and to aid in an entire new generation of religious brainwashing. In the Transformers comic book, issue 67, we see more 9-11 tower destruction in an episode that came out nine years prior to the event. If we consider Newtonian superimposition and time travel a possibility, these little coincidences may not have ever existed if the 9-11 ritual had never happened. The towers might still be intact in another parallel universe, where the color green is red and President Bush's head is up his ass. <laughs> Here we have Cosmic Optimus Christ in his eight-pointed light star. Okay, stop it right there at 148. Oh, go back to 148. Let's see if I can do that. Yeah, there you can see the eight-pointed star. Nice. So is it being used as something to make a planet? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's being used metaphorically in the comic. Gotcha. You know, that he's got a spaceship, that that's the symbol on the spaceship is the eight-pointed light star. But if, if you look at a Tesseract, if you can 
go back for just a second and look at the 4D hypercube, it does kind of rese resemble light reflecting in a diamond, I think. Scroll down. Okay. So click on home. We're, we're, we're not in the right section. While he finds that, can you just basically explain to us um, maybe what the some more of the basic sacred geometry symbols are for some of our viewers? Okay, um, so the basic sacred geometry symbols are the platonic solids, which include the cube, the octahedron, the tetrahedron, the icosahedron, and the dodecahedron. Now, I believe that those are just slightly incomplete. If you add an Archimedean solid called the vector equilibrium to the five platonic solids, you get what I refer to as the metatronic solids, which is six solids. But one of them is an Archimedean solid. That was me. <laughs> that was that was one of my friends trying to call me. I thought your art just had amazing sound effects for a second. So, are these pictures that you've had up now? Are these art that you've created, or? I, I created this. I I superimposed these platinum crystals over the pictures of the pyramids, put the double eye of Horus there, and the rainbow diamond heart. So I composed it. This is more of a collage. I didn't take the picture of the pyramids. Gotcha. Um, would you like to explain the diamond heart portion of your, your name or how that came about? Or, or oh, okay. Well, I, I should share that I recently changed my name legally. And, you know, I don't think of myself in any way as a victim so when something happens I kind of figure it's supposed to happen so back in August uh, Facebook basically said change your name they wanted me to change my name back to my legal name but it's like I don't know it's like the message came up change your name every time I tried to log in it, and I was locked out and I kept thinking about it and I'm like I think I'm going to change my name. <laughs> so I legally changed my name and got that done October 30th. I'm actually surprised Facebook is not going to change my name yet. I've so actually. Anyways, so, anyways, David is my first name. And the you want to know about the Diamond Heart and the Dreamwalker? Correct, yeah. Okay, so. In this one dream, I met a party, and an angel hands me a symbol scratched on a piece of paper, and it shows an infinity sign with four hearts with diamonds capped on top of them like little crowns. And he hands me this card and says, this is for you. This is a symbol from your angels and guides. And I'm like, whoa. And so that's where I got the diamond heart from. And then in a lucid dream, I was at an outdoor cafe having coffee with an angel. And I looked over at her while we were drinking coffee. And I say, what am I? Not who am I, but what am I? And, and she doesn't skip a beat. She looks right back at me and says, you're the dream walker. And then I woke up right after she told me I'm the Dreamwalker. So that's where the Dreamwalker came from. And now it's legal. So, you know, to me that's about walking in authenticity, being the same person on Facebook that I am in real life, instead of being under some fake assumed name. Do so, you think you're being able to walk through your dreams or that you're creating your dreams in reality? 
I, I really think it's kind of metaphorical for the fact that we're like in a world that is a dream within a dream, like Edgar Allan Poe said. All we see in steam is but a dream within a dream. So we're all dreamers. So if I come into your reality bubble, I've walked into your dream. I'm not sure if that makes sense or if that's too no, it does. With all the bubbles for the sacred geometry figure that's on your page, and I was just thinking of like each person is one of those bubbles and they're all connected. And if you could think of each like each soul or each person's connection as one of those circles and just how they make the bigger picture, that's pretty much what we're doing in the reality room. Yeah, so right now on the screen here we got the what I call the geometric flower of life, although it's cut off in this in this Google thing, I'm not sure why. Yeah. But so the there it is. So the geometric flower of life is made from a grid of thirty seven modified Metatron's cubes. So the uh Geometric flower life is much more powerful than a flower life that's just made from interlocking rings. This has a much higher vibration to it. It's much more powerful. I like the, the color being represented in the background of it to create the full circle. Yeah, like I say, this this was, you know, sacred geometry dream channel, you know, like I had dreams about this. Like, you know, at first I didn't even realize what I was being asked to build. I just knew that I was supposed to connect them together. And then I noticed when I connected them like this, that it created this grid, that almost an optical illusion. Like the hexagons, if you kind of back away and defocus your eyes a little bit, the hexagons around the Metatron's cube start to look like circles. Are you following me on that? Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, this, you know, like the rings around the outside, I didn't realize I was doing a flower life. I didn't know until I actually had it done. And it was like, then I had the crystal in the middle that was just like four cubes on a side. And then I had a dream about, and it was like, you know, ring around the posy, Ring around the rosy, pocket full of posy, you know, like the little kids rhyme. Yeah. Now, did you start drawing these by hand, or did you just play with them? The no. Um, here's where, you know, it's kind of a strange thing, but I do not possess freehand art skills. Like, I absolutely don't have those. If I didn't do art on the computer, I don't know if I'd do it at all. It's <laughs> which is kind of strange, but it's, it's, I'm just being honest. Like, I have this addiction to making perfectly symmetrical artwork, and I can't do that by hand. I can only do perfectly symmetrical artwork on the computer. And when it's perfectly symmetrical, it has a much higher vibration than if it's not perfectly symmetrical. Gotcha. Yeah, so I, I think symmetrical... Stuff is really hard freehand, but it's important to raising the vibration. So being able to create art on a computer is a very important thing to our just being as a collective. That way we can see the images because drawing those by hand it would just it would take a very long time. I think it's why it's so intriguing to us when people start seeing crop circles and different things because we know we couldn't do these kind of things without some sort of devices to keep everything symmetrical. Yeah, so, you know, the the sacred geometry artwork vibrates at a really high rate, and, you know, for myself at home, I've got some of the designs printed out, and I've got water charging it. Okay, this is Metatron's Rainbow Healing Cube. Now, this was a channel artwork from Archangel Metatron in a series of dreams. So I like the rainbows. This is the one I believe you last sent me on our Facebook conversation. Did you said it was commissioned by Metatron? Commissioned by Metatron, yeah. 
So, you know, Metron sent me these dreams for months, I mean months, where it was three things. It was the standard Metron's cube plus the vector equilibrium plus the the light splitting prism a la Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon cover art. <laughs> so all of a sudden it's like he would flash these three symbols like on a screen and I could see him in my dream and over and over again he'd show me Metron's cube, the light splitting prism, vector equilibrium, and it drove me crazy for like six months. I'm like, holy crap, what does he want me to do with these? And then one day I had an epiphany and I woke up and I realized he wanted me to combine them all. Now when you include the light splitting prisms on Metron's cube and add the vector equilibrium in, it actually powers this up like tremendously. I mean, this is a lot more powerful than say a standard Metron's cube without the rainbow and without the vector equilibrium. So the vector equilibrium taps the shape into what's called the zero point energy field. Because the vector equilibrium is like a representation of the void or or unlimited potential. The zero point field. Um, well, I think we're going to be concluding up here pretty soon so that we can just do some quick fun to things. But did you have anything else that you really wanted to share, like your website or a store or what your favorite pieces that you're selling or just any last little tidbits? Um, what can I say? Uh, sacred geometry is awesome. It's changed my life. <laughs> you know, the Tesseract really for me I think is has been like a transformational piece of geometry in my life. And um You know, I hope I hope you guys enjoy my artwork. I mean a lot of it out there you can see for free. You know, I haven't like obscured it with these huge watermarks and stuff because I want I want people to know for me it's it's about the art really you know it's about sharing the art it's not necessarily about line in my pockets you know if people like my art enough maybe they go buy a print or canvas or you know print. your website is chakraactivation.com I have basically chakra activation is like my main website, and then I've got places where I'm selling shapes, and I'm selling graphical art, and um, you know the one thing that I would recommend. Um, I'm not sure if you can pick this up, but let's try this. Can you? Get this flash animation to work on your screen. Do you is have it, a, a Windows operating system? Is it the... I'm on Chrome. This thing? Oh, that's crazy. I think I can do it. Hold on. The chakra activation animated rainbow pinwheel? Yes. Can, I can, can you see it Yes, sir. That okay, so you can get that on the screenshot on the, on the Hangout. Jerry. No, not that one. Alright. That one's crazy though. It's going <laughs> so fast on my computer right now. Where's the other one at? I got it. Okay. Um, Metatron's Rainbow Healing Cube. Yeah. I'll get that out there in one second. He's screen sharing. Sorry. So then I don't know if you guys will be able to see it spin. It's it's okay. So, anyways, this is Metron's Rainbow Healing Cube. And so, after Metron sends me these dreams for like six months of, of these three shapes together, and I finally figure out he wants me to combine them, then he sends me dreams of, of the Metron's Rainbow Healing Cube and something that's spinning. Metron's Rainbow Healing Cube, then a blender. Metron's Rainbow Healing Cube, and then water going down the drain. Metron's Rainbow Healing Cube, and then Toilet Flushing. Metron's Rainbow Healing Cube, and then a Hurricane. So it was like, you know, I guess I'm thick in the head, but it wasn't until he showed me a pinwheel. 
He showed me in my, in my dream like a pinwheel, like a child's pinwheel, spinning in the wind. And I could see it in my dream spinning. So at, at the frame rate that this rotates, it actually spins at eight rotations a second. It creates an optical illusion and it creates two incredible vortices of energy. Can you feel the vortex of energy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, you know, this is this is from Archangel Metron. It's a gift for everyone. You know, it's like I just it's such a powerful healing tool. I I couldn't I couldn't charge for it. You know, it was just like it's something from Metatron. <laughs> and are you able to support yourself through your art or do you have a a normal quote unquote job or anything like that or do you fully be are able to express yourself through your artwork? Um, <laughs> I, I have some investments that provide residual income where I don't depend on my artwork to live and I don't work for anyone else. <laughs> I just think it's important for our viewers to know that our people that get these messages don't have to be in certain standards of society or working a job or not working a job or if they're able to support themselves and it just gives people an opportunity to know that people do enjoy the support for their artwork because I know there's a lot of artists that are struggling right now. I mean for me it's it's like I I don't struggle about it I mean I realize that marketing is probably a weak point for me but I guess I trust the universe that the people that are attracted to and will benefit from art will find their way to it. Mm. You know, like, I don't know, it's like owning a piece of my art probably is not for everyone. You know, it's like if someone's not on a certain vibrational level, they won't feel any attraction to it. Does that make sense? It's definitely for certain people. I think it's meant for everybody, but only certain people will appreciate it. Yeah, you know, it's it's like, um, you know, some some of my shapes though are definitely revolutionary. Oh, like, can you go back to the Shapeways store for a second? What was it? Can you send me a link to it. It's up at the top on the right. I was uh, I was just really into that into that picture right here, and it, it's an awesome thing. And, and <laughs> if you the energies, you can actually feel it kind of shake your light body. I don't even know how else to put it. It kind of like grabs you and just shakes you. There are people that are in our chat room that are watching it, and they're just like, "Whoa!" <laughs> people are loving it, and um, one of them did have a question, but I believe you already answered it. She wanted to know what just inspired you in if there was any like true inspiration or a person, um, I, I took it as it was your angels, but if there's anybody else you'd like to give a shout out to, we would love to hear it. Well, um, okay, so, um, I've been inspired by like, you know, the platonic solids and the crystalline light body shapes. I mean, some of my inspiration has been to, to make these objects and make them perfect. Like, for instance, there's something called a stellated dodecahedron. It's one of the crystalline light body shapes. So, like, the platonic solids and the vector equilibrium would be like a level one, or, you know, so to speak. The crystalline light body shapes are like a level two. They're like, so, like, there's a dodecahedron. There's a stellated dodecahedron that, let me post the link here. There's a stellated dodecahedron, and now I've only seen the stellated dodecahedron executed in cut agate, and I didn't like it because, one, it was solid, and two, it wasn't quite perfect. And so, can, do you see the link over on the right side? I just chatted it to you. So the 
stellar dodecahedron, in my mind's eye, if it was, scroll down just a hair. Hello? Is this the right one? Is it scrolling for you? I don't know what's going on. This isn't scrolling. No. Oh. So, so like, okay. in, in my mind's eye, if the shape was hollow, then the energy could flow around the outside in through the center of it, and it would have a higher vibration. See, a solid object is going to take the path of least resistance. So vibrations for a solid object are more likely to travel over the surface of it than through it. Are you following me? Yeah, so it's going through it rather than going around it, so it has to be transmuted. It, it, like I say, having these vents in there, having it hollow in the center gives the, a different vibration to the shape than just a, a solid stellated dodecahedron. It's, it's like a marked improvement. So, you know, like... So my inspiration has been to make things that were better than other people were making, or things that no one else was making. Like, for instance, there's um, what I call the God Star, which is a 24-pointed stellated tetrachus hexahedron, which is quite a mouthful. But the 24-pointed God Star was basically revealed by James Tiberon to the world in a channeled message from Metatron. So the God Star, 24-pointed star, no one had made one. And I was intrigued by the idea of making one, and then I came up with this beautiful 24-pointed star that has, like, so much energy to it, I can't even describe it. It's, it's, it's insane. <laughs> As 24 points with three faces per point for 72 faces altogether. And if you know anything about ancient Kabbalah, you know that there are 72 names of God. So this is the highest vibration of the crystal and light body shapes. That's awesome. Well, you are a very blessed person to have been able to just create all these in a, in a design matter so that we were able to share them with each other. So I'm grateful that you came on and you gave us a, a moment to understand it. So a lot of people, it might have been just shapes, but to us and a lot of our viewers, and obviously you, they it really does just raise our vibrations. Yeah. And Definitely. I'm grateful to have, have it around. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on the show. Um, you know, uh, I hope people will check out the stuff. For sure. And, yeah. um we will share your website to support you. Did you have anybody you wanted to give a shout out or a hello to? You like to end the show with a shout out moment? Or... Shout out moment? <laughs> I guess I'd put a shout out to Archangel Metatron. <laughs> That's awesome. That he's, sure. he's like my dude, you know, like, like, I don't know. He's, he's Medi to me, you know, it's like, he's my bud. That is awesome. Aww. I think everybody should check into Archangel Metatron. He's a very awesome Archangel. Yeah. Well, in the chat. Well, thank you, too. Well, basically, Metatron is God in angel form. You can take the energy of God and step it down to the point where it won't liquefy you to interact with that energy. <laughs> true. He was also one of the only Archangels to walk on Earth in human form is I think Enoch. So. Yeah, now a lot of people think that, you know, Enoch became Archangel Metatron, but my thought is if you were an angel, you're always an angel. Like, a human wouldn't be turned into an angel. So, like, and you'd have to have a sacred geometry, dude, at the advent of a physical universe. You'd have to have the laws of a physical reality. I so, like that because I, I like to think that he was, he's always been an archangel as well, and if he's able to, I don't know, I use the Merkaba as like a vehicle, and if he can use that, then he's probably able to time travel and just create himself in the physical realm, and maybe he's just among us every day in a physical way, and we don't even know. Oh, I, I believe that, you know, like some of the ancient Kabbalists will say 
they'll refer to Metatron as the lesser Yahweh. So basically, Metatron would have all the powers of creation and destruction, save the power of destroying God. You know, like he could do anything else, like create universes, whatever. I think we're all trying to create new universes and realities, and we're just grateful to have started to find our tribes and communities to grow that. And we're grateful to have you on the podcast and as a part of ours. So yeah. we are blessed. Everyone in the chat loves it and loves your artwork, and we hope that you have a very blessed night. All right, thanks a lot for having me on the Hangout. Thanks. I want to say. Feel free to check out our Twitter. <laughs> People, we're loving you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. So that was our guest for our Thursday podcast. Do you have anything you wanted to add to real quick? Um, that was... He had a lot of amazing pictures, and they were very activating. So um, that was very interesting. I have never talked to him before, so... That was actually my first time podcast. talking to him, like... Interactively, I've been very. Uh, I've had some conversations with him on Facebook, but um, I believe that was one of our first guests that we weren't personally interactive with. Is that a good way to say that? Yeah. Um, so it's really nice to be branching out in the podcast and just getting more people a part of it. So it's not just quote unquote our friends and family members. We're really reaching out there and trying to find anyone in the spiritual community that wants to pretty much share their story. So, that's pretty awesome. Yes. And thank you all for listening. Uh, we do still have a few more things and uh, Shannon has a card reading she would like to do. Yeah, I want to end the, the podcast with that. Too. I'll get my screen share up if it'll work. Did you have anything else before I did my card reading? Um... I would just like to say, like, sacred geometry is really amazing, and we should all invest in it. I uh, I really liked what he had to say about the the Merkaba. Um, Nick Bryce, who is one of uh, one of your good friends, yeah. and become a really good friend of mine over the last couple months. He he does Merkaba workshops in um, Monday Merkaba Merkaba Mondays at the Universe Building. So if you're in Detroit, you should definitely check that out. And yeah. Get into the the Merkaba activation circles. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I did a uh, a workshop with him at Frequinox, I believe. We were we were on top of a barn, and yeah. I, I I'm one that's it's hard for me to sit down and meditate, especially if I'm not in my own sacred space. But I really let go for that one, and I I saw some archangels of my own. I saw Hanuel, and I I believe. If I remember correctly, it was Ariel, and that's why when he was speaking about being touched by an angel, it really, really spoke out to me, and I wanted to give a shout-out. So if you guys ever just feel like you're being touched by angels, just look up some of the different archangel names and just see which one resonates with you the most. That way it gives you a chance to communicate with that one more. If you can call them by your side and have like a full conversation with them. Yeah. If you feel like you've been touched by the devil, then you let us know and we will send you some distance Reiki because we just got our Reiki twos. Boom. Ooh, Boom. James Scramlin. Also, if you're in Detroit and you want some Reiki, check out in Indigo Healing Gifts, I believe. But he just has a healing room that's really calming and he is looking for more people to branch out to. And yes, he is. He's been very welcoming and uh, exciting to work with. A Detroit fellow as well. So, Detroit people. Um, I did want to add real quick that uh, on January 20th, let me check my notes real quick. On January 20th, we are having Nick Bryce. He will be on. He's a, a Merkaba light body activator, and he will talk and describe you through the process of activating your Merkaba. So that will be coming up on the 20th, January 20th. Check the schedule. <laughs> Um, I think if we wanted to keep going, we might have someone that wants to hop on for a second. Uh, sure, yeah. Bring them on. Let's see here. It's always interesting to see what else I can say. And then before 
we get off, we'll give another couple minutes discussion with anyone in the chat that wants to join. And um, I have a card reading that I'd like to share with everybody. So I posted the link in the chat. People are coming on to get card readings. Then? I don't know if they're getting a card reading. I think Nick wants to come on and talk about geometry real quick. Yeah. Um, maybe if you can't get on there, well, can you bring my picture? Up? Yeah, I just had it up and I closed it because I thought. I'm sorry. I thought we were going to be quicker than that, so that I didn't lose anybody. I was just going to go and do it. Okay. okay. All right. So for tonight's card reading. I was excited about it because it seems like a pretty good one. Um, it started with the Rejoice in Celebration, which was just a time of merriment. I'm giving a card reading. I'm glad to join. Card reading. All right. One more second. So our first card was Rejoice in Celebration. It, it just represents a time of merriment and victory and that we're doing what we love most and pursuing pursuing passions. And I think it's going for all of us towards the end of the year we're really just getting into that zone and being able to celebrate more. And it just seems like a really good year for people. It seems like the worst year but the best year for most people I've talked to, which has been an interesting conversation. Um, it's also the number three which symbolizes unity and a time to rejoice in gratitude and sharing whether it's with family members, friends, or even coworkers, which in this moment is just pretty much through attrition and abundance for all of us are coming back to us for our dedicated work and efforts, which gave us the solitude card, which is telling us that our souls need to be honored and heard and that what we're seeking isn't necessarily found in the outer world and that it's just time for us to step back and withdraw from outside and remember how important it is for us to meditate and reflect and reevaluate what's going on. So though we're rejoicing, we still need to take time for our spiritual selves to grow and just take that time to strengthen with our divine sources before the new year. And to just conserve our energy and deal with things one at a time because they're starting to get really hectic. And the last card is harmony, which I think is what we're all striving for. It's just a harmonious life. And it signifies the possibility that the spiritual initiation and partnership reunion is taking place at this time or just manifesting for the future. Um, it doesn't always represent love or romantic things. It just means that something is being built through a personal or business related relationship. And that not all of them have to be one on one either. This could be a group of people coming together as an organization or just to take care of a situation. And oftentimes people do this towards the end of the year into the new. Um, pretty much what the Harmony card wants for us to do is to ask ourselves what we're learning right now and what the qualities are we're developing so that we can continue to grow from them. And part of the reason when I laid the cards down, the Harmony card was a little bit distant from the others. I just felt like it was something we're really working towards and moving into. And we're working on how to make that stronger. So moving into the new year, just remember that we're celebrating all the awesome things we did, but to not forget to connect with the divine for a harmonious relationship. And now we've got Nick on, and I'm sure he has something awesome he'd like to chat about real quick before we end for the night. Nick's got a haircut. <laughs> no, I just have really gross bed head. I need to shower. <laughs> Nick's got bed head. <laughs> bed head. What's up, you guys? Just uh, just what I've been uh, working through is I feel like so a lot of people who've been waking up lately and experiencing whatever they've kind of they feel like oh I'm different than I was in the past I'm different than I was when I was the ego or whatever terms you may want to use uh, for me. When before I began my spiritual journey, um, the ego felt like it, it was on top of the world. It was winning at everything. It was the best at everything, and that feeling—it was a very real feeling. Uh, but the building blocks of it and how that being operated, uh, it harmed others. It basically like created a bunch of karmic situations to be resolved. 
Um, and what I'm noticing with this shift now is that all of those feelings of triumph and completion and best is being felt again, but now it's being felt through the heart and it's being felt with every other being that is here with us. And the, the things that we have done, the things that we've created or think or, or anything at all, anything that could be attached to, hey, I did that, hey, I, you know, I'm this good or, or whatever, none of that could be had unless every other being in this game, in this place, in this existence, beings that are part of everything, none of that could be had unless every single one of those beings was doing those same perfect things within themselves. So it's just a, a really good point in the direction of everything truly is perfect. Every thought you've had, every action you've took, any anything, it's exactly as it should be and should have been and will be because we are just, you know, these non-physical beings perceiving this physical place and kind of watching it as the most intense movie ever created, the most, like, intense video game <laughs> ever created. And it's like we're at the final boss. We know the game can be beat because there's a strategy guide. But the strategy guide part of the game is for the final boss. It was ripped out, so we have to do it completely off the book. But it's so familiar because we were the creators of that game, and it was just so dense and so expansive and profound that we got lost in it. But it wasn't even lost because it was all orchestrated to be that way, to have each being experience those feelings. And I just want to bring awareness to notice, you know, how you're feeling now as opposed to how you felt before. Regardless of time and space and past or future or whatever, just remember, like, you know, your consciousness that you are, those experiences that you've experienced, they happened or are happening or whatever. And there were very real feelings attached to those experiences. And it's always, you know, it's a benefit and a pleasurable experience to, you know, travel back in those places and be that person again and see where you came from, see how you're feeling now in relation to those, and just, you know, everything is everything. So even if you're like, oh, the ego, or the mind, or the soul, or past life, or future life, or now, it's all, you know, it. It's all God. It's all source. It's all everything. So that means it's real. You know, real things were felt. And it's just so awesome to to go through these things and be like, oh, I felt this way even though I was doing all of these things wrong. You know, that wrong is a judgment regardless if that's good or bad. But that feeling, you know, was felt. And at the end of the experience, you know, everyone's going to be feeling limitless and bliss and peace and relaxation and all of these great things. The beings will feel anything that they want to feel, but that feeling it's going to be shared, that feeling of unity, of connecting into that consciousness that we are, it's going to be shared. And, you know, that just means that regardless of the specifics, it is what it is, and it's simple. You know, it's complicated, but it's the most simple thing ever. And that's a pretty cool thing, I think. Can I share something with you? Yes. While you were speaking and doing your segment, I pulled some cards. And they were just really intriguing cards because the first, one I, the first one I pulled was the Sacral Chakra card, which means you were talking from your Sacral Chakra and your confidence level. 
and no, just not your not really your ego, just strictly from your your chakras. And then the next ones I pulled, I pulled three pretty much together. And it was the mental conflict card, the obstacle one challenges, and the emotional withdrawal, which was exactly what you were talking about, how people are going through things and need to withdraw themselves from them. So it was perfect alignment with all of that. And the last one was the passion ignited, which was you being able to speak about it and ignite others' passion into really getting into themselves. Yeah. Describes it very well, indeed. I love oracle cards sometimes. Yeah, it's like, I don't, like, I... For those of you that know me quite personally, you know, I was always very logically oriented, speaking through the mind, speaking through the ego. Uh, it's it's learned talents and all of this stuff. And now, you know, even though I say that the ego is the same being as the soul and all of this stuff, it's just kind of like I, I, I feel out what's going on and I speak. I don't even speak. I just intuitively tune into different frequencies and... The brain takes action on the voice box, and you know things come out of here. And it's you know you if the people who hear these frequencies, these vibrations, you know take what they can take, and leave you know whatever is not for them, and it all works out perfectly. So it really doesn't even matter what I'm saying because everyone's getting a different message from it. And it's you know if you can be simple and broad at the same time but you know really speaking from speaking from the consciousness instead of speaking about consciousness you can really assist others in a very nice way and really serve them instead of serving you know yourself trying to gain something you know nothing needs to be gained but those yep. cards are sweet. <laughs> the last card? Is that what you said? All of them. What was the last one? I, I just thought you said the last one was sweet. It was the Passion Ignited card. She's got this really cool... Let me see here. Let me get it. She's like holding a chalice and it's like flaming. And oh, it's green. Yeah, it's a green chalice. So it's the heart chakra lit with the, the colors of the sacral chakra. Like she's lighting herself from the first card. She's like, oh. Yeah. And it's like the sacral chakra is like glowing behind her. And those symbols like coming together are important. Like that's just the angels pulling cards that I have, the synchronicity to like show people that mm. things are like happening. We had Sarah on Tuesday. We missed you, by the way, but we had Sarah on Tuesday oh, no. explaining how the different symbols and cards like reappearing. And actually in the obstacles and challenges card, he's walking a plank. And he's got the same light orb around the plank that's surrounding her. So it's almost like you have that orb of energy surrounding you through the storyboard. Nice. And it's glowing from the sacral chakra. So it's really your confidence level and how confident you or just anyone receiving the message is it like going through those situations and be able to just emotionally withdraw them from it. And he's by water and I've been spending a lot of time like walking towards water and just trying to be like near water. It does look like you too. He's chilling. <laughs> and then, it's a green card. And then the other one is a guy that has like himself in his brain and it's growing and then the outside of him is all like geometry and more like in the box and it's That's kind so of like good. people coming out of the box. It looks like if you shave your head. Bruce Willis. Are you shaving your head? <laughs> hey you guys, I had a dream this morning that uh, it was a, a future timeline and a mason, it was a it was a, this this open field school, kind of like, you know, a, an outdoor mall or something. But it was really big, and this mason was teaching a class about sacred geometry. And before the class, like, there was like 50 or 100 of us. We were just like, everyone was throwing stuff and playing catch and other people doing yoga. But it was just like that feeling that I got was, you know, this is already being experienced. There's already beings that are getting feeling from this and the soul experience and... All we have to do is be open to just the most highest, you know, dream that you can dream, and it's it's yeah. inevitable. I think we're all striving to reach high for that highest quality. But yes. I'm glad that you joined <laughs> in with us tonight. We, we've been missing having you. We, we enjoy having multiple guests and hosts. And just glad to have your segment. 
as always. Always a pleasure to see you guys. Oh, that would be interesting. And we have Miss Reed too. I think she said she had some art she wanted to share. Hi, guys. Hey. <laughs> oh, Nick, thanks for saying all that. It was just so spot on with me and what I'm going through and healing. Nice. Everything. Yeah, so yesterday I just did some art, and I haven't for so long. And um, I'd like to show you guys. <laughs> it's oh, some pastel. Oh, it's so stuff. good. I'm not done yet, but <laughs> I worked so long on it, though. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to show you guys and thank you guys for everything you do. And yeah. Just yeah. kind of cheered up earlier tonight. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you Ooh, for being every... the most perfect version of yourself right now. Oh, thank you. thank you guys. Like, you guys really helped me out, like, so much. Like, I know I say it all the time. It might be, like, annoying what you guys do. <laughs> So annoying! I can't even stand it anymore. <laughs> so annoying! I just, I'm just so grateful. So I just say thank you over and over and over again, and yeah, I just thank you guys so much. That's what I wanted to say. And you have a dedicated fan. You and Samantha have been really just a big push, and Barb and Only. everybody that's been just in the chat room every week. Most I just like, yeah. it's from Thursdays too, and that just keeps us going. I just. Yeah. I just really love telling everybody about you guys because you guys have helped me and I want to help other people heal and I know I have to work on myself first and I have been like healing and it's just great what you guys do like it's just such a gift Aww. Aww. Thanks, guys. Wow. well we are grateful that you joined us and are able to express that love because it helps keep us going every day to know that we have someone that is willing to help us and Jump on cam with us and be a part of it. You guys are all growing so much, and I'm so proud of you all. And just keep shining. Shine tastic. <laughs> <laughs> Shine time. Sorry. So good. Shine time. Check out my new citrine cluster <gasps> birthstone. Shine and really nice. Ooh, shiny. Would you like to tell us anything about citrine? Would you like to start? Oh, man. Hey, Chris, yeah. like, you're doing it every week now. Yep, we just started it. We mentioned it, and now it's a thing. Go. <laughs> so for me, what it, what I feel intuitively from citrine, topaz, the color yellow, uh, any of these things, is it deals with the solar plexus, which is basically oh. our power center. Now the heart is the life center, but the the solar plexus is the the power. You know, the conviction, the strength, the willpower, the desire to get out of bed and make something of yourself every, you know, day, every moment. So even wearing the color yellow will allow you to experience these attributes easily. Um, and for me, being a Scorpio and CeeLo as well, this is our birthstone. So... Regardless of any kind of labels of, of different, you know, zodiac sign, astral, whatever, this stone is associated with when this body was created on, you know, this place. So it really ties in a lot to just your entire existence, your entire life. So it may, uh, may assist not only with having conviction and making your life the best can be, or rather allowing it to be the best it can be, it can just tie you in with so many other frequencies that may have taken more time if you didn't use, you know, this crystal. So, like, it may take someone, may take someone 20 years to create their own business, but if they clear and open and strengthen their, you know, their lower three chakras, more specifically the, the solar plexus, then that 20-year business can now be a three- or four-year business, a one-year, you know, reaching that same exquisiteness that may have been possible before, just simply because they have more life force to put towards things that they want to manifest and crystallize. Speaking of business, did you mention that you were interested in some crystal elixirs? Is that something we should be looking forward to? 
that is definitely a strong idea. I must talk to my my co-captain on this manner and see what can be done. But yeah, they're uh, they're so good. It's just basically like the same way you take a crystal and hold it in your hand and meditate with it, or or a bunch of crystals. I like to go really overboard and have like <laughs> crystals all over my body and stuff. But you, these elixirs, uh, you it's in it's in liquid form. You take it with a dropper. And it goes under your tongue, and what happens basically is it becomes instantly integrated into your DNA, and you can start to, you know, experience. It's That's like, so great. It could be equivalent to, you know, having a consistent meditation for, you know, 10 minutes a day, and you do that for a month. What, what, what could happen in the body and in the energetic field by taking these elixirs, and specific these transi transition elixirs that were just recently concocted, um, what would happen in that month of meditating every day for 10 minutes could be released in one day. You know, you would experience these profound shifts in a much more rapid manner, the same way of taking monoatomic elements or eating raw foods, or, you know, anything that increases your frequency, except these are more in a specific manner, a more um, refined and something understandable. So it's it's really nice. That's awesome. And just speaking a little bit back on the citrine, which Sue, by the way, he, he has some, uh, some crystals. Too. We got some from um, James Grandma on our Reiki 2 guide. Ooh, nice. Some phenakite. And phenakite, I read earlier, it's an amazing crystal. You should check into yes, that. Yes, it's so good. Um, but speaking on citrine, you pretty much hit it right on. Uh, according to my, my crystal Bible, it says that it's connected to the sun and cleansing, but it also just in, it boosts willpower, confidence in the life force, and helps with uh, stomach disorders, and just motivation, and being able to do the dreams, which, like you said, business manifestation, and it's a very good manifestation. You did really well with that. And, yeah, and if any, I have a couple of different um, citrine bracelets and necklaces in my shop too. So if you need to wear it, I can definitely help you out with that. Sweet. And Nick, another, what? Oops, with, sorry. With crystals, don't be sorry. It's fine. This is what happens. High vibration people. We talk loud and fast, and we interrupt each other a lot. What you said was just so synchronistic because on Tuesday Sarah pulled a um, solar plexus yeah. card for me and then like you just pulled out the citrine and I was just like oh my god it's like it's just so spot on <laughs> that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Another thing I like with crystals I always talk about the metaphysical stuff um, and not everyone knows that metaphysical things are connected to the physical body because they're one and the same. Uh, but crystals, they heal physical ailments. They repair organs, uh, just like our energy centers. The, the third eye energy center, we don't see through our forehead, people. We have a pineal gland that excretes chemicals into the brain that has its a specific frequency that literally breathes the prana that is all of life. So this place, it's a significant spot, but what's really happening in our chemical computer, in the middle of our brain, we have an organ called the pineal gland, and you know, you can read all up about it, but these crystals and these different frequencies, they act with the physical body as well, because this vessel that we're in, it's not some untangible, oh, I'm not real because I'm made up of 90% empty space. <laughs> it, these bodies are a physical, holographic, you know, it's a, it's a form of reality, and the crystals, they work on multidimensional levels, yes, but it's all one of the same, so it also affects the physical aspects as well, and it literally heals this vessel that we are existing in right now. Uh, that's beautiful. You're beautiful. Oh, oh. Man, now we can save it. <laughs> that's going on the front page. That nice. was great, Nick. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, thanks, you guys. I mean, this, this is this is where everyone is going. Everyone is going to be able to have, you know, everyone has this knowledge. It's just a matter of time until their journey takes them to finding it out. You know, all of you guys know a ton of stuff I can't even think about. But that's why we're in these separate things. <laughs> our bodies <laughs> changed by things. <laughs> Oh, I, I felt like when you were moving your hand, I could feel, like, the energy of you, like, poking my belly. <laughs> awesome. Ah! <laughs> Super Saiyan! Well, I think we should pretty much wrap up the, the live segment of the Project for Middle Life. If you want to stay in the, the chat or the, the hangout, that's awesome. But if anyone has anything to say before we end the live feed, yeah, can I say something real quick? I would just like to thank our host for today. Fantastic. Um, and next week on Tuesday, she will be the guest talking about some projects that she has going on in opinion. So thank you, and thank you for Nick. And thank you guys so thank much you. for having me on and let me, right. letting me show you guys my art. I'm glad that you awesome. it. Me too. Thanks, I'm glad we got to do our crystal segment. Yeah, you guys got to do it right away. It was done. Bam, boom, done. Don't right. forget to drink a ton of pure water because these bodies are going through shifts and we are, you know, a large percentage of water. And uh, it helps flush everything out and make everything move. I would just like to say, watch lots of Star Trek. Yes. Big yes. Yes. <laughs> totally <laughs> watch Star Trek. <laughs> the next generation. Yeah. The one we that's... watched last night. Yep. We watched the one where. They... Okay, wait. We gotta end this if we're gonna go on a rant. Okay, yeah. well we are gonna have an hour segment with Star Trek, but you guys <laughs> paint the states. Have a good night, shine time, everybody. Bye, Bye guys. Thank Namaste. You. Blessings.